Shares of CoreWeave uh, soaring more than 150% since the company uh, went public last March. The company focuses on powering AI uh, workloads, making it a direct play on rising infrastructure demand. Joining us now first on CNBC, Mike Intrader, CoreWeave CEO. Welcome. Thanks for having me. It's good. To, we'll start with uh, what they, they call a, a blunt five-word uh, take on the AI debate, and that is violent change in violent demand and it's not circular it's it's the world we're in right now and and you're dispelling any critique it, it's just, we've never done this before that we? was that was concise that was that, that was exactly dead on can, can, um, you, can you put some meat on the bone yeah look um what 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 you're seeing in uh, core weaves uh, commercial activity what you're seeing across the data center space what you're seeing across uh, silicon providers and what you're seeing across uh, all of the application layer for artificial intelligence is a sustained demand um, from enterprise clients, from cloud clients, uh, from uh, retail clients that are trying to access uh, infrastructure at a size and scale that does not exist. And the market is working diligently to uh, produce enough infrastructure for uh, it to effectively allow artificial intelligence to achieve its potential. Think uh, the, these companies that are your clients are well-heeled, huge market cap companies. I think that makes it different. The numbers are staggering that we hear. They're, they're numbers that the money doesn't exist. That's why people are worried that they're circular deals, but, but it, it, it's possible it does exist at some point, I guess. So, so look, there, we serve the entire uh, AI ecosystem. And that's everything from Microsoft and Meta. Uh, it's everything from NVIDIA through uh, AI labs, through a couple of computer science students coming out of a program with an idea of what business is going to look like in the future. And all of those different entities access the infrastructure that they require to be able to run their business through our software, through our physical infrastructure. So when, five years from now, the build out is, is uh, probably never be complete, but let's say it's like, once we had the railroads crisscrossing the entire country, so it's there. Do you see the payoff? Do you see the payoff that, that suddenly that the, the money that was spent is, is coming back in two or three times the re return on investment? So I, I think in, five or 10 years, you're going to be in a world where artificial intelligence is embedded into absolutely everything we do. And it will continue to pay dividends for the next 100 years. And what you're seeing is the base load infrastructure being built right now at uh, what has historically been uh, a pace that wasn't even considered. Um, and uh, companies like CoreWeave, and there are others, are out there building the infrastructure to be able to right. deliver that for, for these clients. Can I say, you, I see three risks in this whole thing, and I was actually with one of the leading uh, CEOs of an AI company earlier this morning. Um, one being that some of these companies just run out of capital along the way. Not necessarily Google or Meta, but one of the independents, uh, for whatever reason, competitively, it doesn't work for them in the same way some of the bigger guys effectively take share and then it becomes harder for them. That's one issue. Two is that there's actually a technological breakthrough a la deep seek, but on steroids, where all of a sudden we actually don't need the same amount of compute that we thought we did. And three, that the depreciation schedule for some of these chips is actually a lot shorter than we think. Not to say that they can't be used in some way, but that for this all to work, you just actually need the new ones and you're not building the railroads because you have to basically update the railroads every two years. What do you make of those three risks? All right, so let's, let's go through them one at a time, right? So uh, um, the first risk is that some of the companies that are buying this infrastructure um, will run out of cash. And um, I think it stands to reason that in every new wave of business, there are companies that are built that do not make it. And we fully expect that there will be companies that shut down, there will be companies that go bankrupt, there will be companies that will be bought by other um, um, uh, companies. And that is the natural course of how a new industry comes into existence. And so 
Um, from, from the Coral Weave position, the, the requirement for us is to manage our risk from the portfolio of different clients that we sell to. And so, yes, we sell to some startups. Uh, yes, we sell to some clouds. Yes, we sell to some enterprises. And by being able to sell across the entire space, you're able to manage the risk of any one or any multiple uh, uh, bankruptcies. Right. We fully expect that to happen, and I think anyone who's looking at the space understands that some of these companies won't make it. There will be Pets.com. However, but it won't take down the overall. It won't take down the overall market. Mm -hmm. And the other thing that will happen is, is you're seeing companies that will be the defining companies of the next 50 years of technology. And so that that's the first okay. bucket. Is that 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 will happen, and it needs to be managed, and everyone should expect it. The second one is technological dislocation. And what I would say is that um, people who work in this space, the fact that DeepSeek occurred didn't shock anyone. There will be step functions in efficiency. There will be step functions in technology. Anyone working in this business fully expects that to occur on a regular basis. Um, and you know, I, I think the market reacted, and the market most certainly did react, um, to the fact that it came out of China. That was more shocking than the fact that there was a technology step function. Um, I think we can say with a high degree of confidence, you will see a number of those over the next five years. Um, we hope you do. But nothing that shakes the business to its core is a function of that. So, so nothing that's going to shake the business to its core because we have built the business on long-term contracts with creditworthy counterparties. So. When a new technology comes out, when a new way of using compute comes out, what will happen is, is when the clients of ours come in to renew or to buy new technology, they will buy different technology. We've seen it already, wave after wave of clients. They don't renew on existing technology necessarily as much as they come in and buy the new cutting edge, the new best GPU. Um, they went from NVIDIA's uh, H100s to the H200s to the GB200s, and we continue to see that, and we expect to continue to see that. And I forget what your third Depreciation, question but uh, we're... Yeah, depreciation, it's... Look, like, I, I, I don't care what some short in the market says about depreciation. The way I think about depreciation is what are my clients willing to pay for today? If they are willing to buy a contract that goes out for five years or six years, they are telling us that the compute has value to them over five or six years. That is defining the obsolescence curve. That is defining the depreciation curve. And they know new technology is going to come out. They're perfectly aware that there will be a new, better generation, and they are just simply working through the process of, we use this technology to train our bleeding edge models, and then when there's new technology, we'll use that technology to do it. And we'll take the existing technology that we bought right. two years ago and repurpose it to other functions where we need compute. We have seen okay. repeated repurchase of A100s, of H100s again and again from new clients with new use cases.